The top five ways to revive non-responsive lists. Hey, listen, it happens to the best of us. You have taken extra care to target the right prospects. You've added the right bells and whistles to your sales funnels, and you still get stuck with a non-responsive list. Even if you've dotted your I's and crossed your T's, you can still end up in this situation. There's no need to throw in the towel. There's no need to get desperate and conclude that you have failed. Here are the top five ways to revive non-responsive lists. Method number one. Ask list members to thank you or to comment. When you ask somebody on your list to say thank you after receiving your email, you are gathering some vital information about that email. What you are actually doing is setting up your email software to detect which recipients actually opened your email. You have to understand that when you build an email list, a significant number of people will not open your email after they have received the freebie you offered them. That's just the nature of the beast. When you say in the headline that you'd like to hear from people, this can boost your open rate. This is a very important method of telling your list members apart. Some people have completely lost interest in what you have to say. They are still on your subscription list, but they are essentially just list squatters. There are other people who would still like to receive your emails, but haven't gotten around to actually opening them. When you ask list members to say thank you or to respond with a simple comment, you are actually trying to detect this second group of individuals. Method number two, give symbolic rewards. Tell people that they should open their email because there's a reward there. Believe it or not, most people would respond more favorably to symbolic rewards than monetary rewards. I know it sounds crazy, but this is how it actually does go down in the real world. It doesn't cost that much money to give away some sort of banner or picture. Give these symbolic rewards to get people to open your emails more often. This also gives you a tremendous opportunity to remind people why they joined your list in the first place. Method number three. Mention their first name in the subject line. Dale Carnegie, the genius who wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People, said that the sweetest word in the English language is a person's name. Mention the list member's name in the subject line of your updates from time to time. Depending on the email software you use, this should be fairly easy to do. Of course, you have to make sure you collect the first names with your squeeze page. Make sure that this is a required field. Method number four. Mention their name and thank them in the subject line with a reminder of a freebie in the body. Most of the time, people join your list because there's some sort of incentive in it for them. They receive some sort of a freebie. One of the most effective ways to revive your list is to simply remind people of this freebie. Maybe they didn't get around to downloading it. Maybe they didn't use it that often or did not read it. By mentioning their name in your subject line, you're giving a tremendous opportunity to direct their attention to the freebie that they were initially interested in. This can revive interest in your list and boost your overall open rates. Method number five, replenish your highest engagement email. By just looking at the track record of your list and paying attention to the overall open rates as well as click-through rates, a certain pattern should emerge. You can clearly see that some emails, for some reason or another, simply resonate with your membership. Replenish future emails with similar stuff as much as possible and more people will look forward to opening your emails. Keep these five top tips in mind when faced with a non-responsive list. It's not the end of the world, but you have to be proactive so you can turn things around. The number one secret ingredient to successful email lists. You have probably heard of all sorts of successful marketers making millions of dollars from their email lists. Believe me, these are not unicorns. They are not few and far between. They are not accidents. Instead, the people who run them found a system for building successful lists. The good news is, if they can do it, you can too. What is their secret? There are actually many different secrets, but they all boil down to one key concept. Wrap your mind around this concept. Implement it with your own mailing list, and you can well be on your way to replicating these successful marketers. What is the secret? It's emotional buy-in. You need to get your list members to emotionally buy into what you're doing. 
These members must be made to feel emotionally invested in the success of your list. When they feel they have some skin in the game, sort of speak, they are more likely to read your email. They will open your emails more often. They will engage with you by sending responses. They are more likely to click on the links contained in your emails. Most importantly, they're more likely to share your email by forwarding it to their friends or maybe even posting it on Facebook. How come? Why do people buy in emotionally to any type of content? If you have been following Instagram influencers, you would know this is not unusual. There are influential people on social media who have hardcore, diehard fans. How did this happen? Well, these people feel they are co-owners or have a stake in the content of that account. Get people on your list to feel the same way. Well, how do you make this happen? You can try one, a few, or all of the following. First, ask for their participation and mention them in your updates. People would like to feel that they matter. People would like to see their name printed somewhere. It makes them feel important and substantial. Next, you should credit them for their ideas. Don't dismiss ideas. Don't filter people's suggestions. If they took the time out and effort to share their thoughts with you, credit them. Acknowledge them. You don't have to carry out those ideas, but when you give people credit, they feel emotionally tied to your list. Next, you should ask for people's help. When you ask for somebody's help, you are basically telling that person that they can do things that you can't do. This makes people feel important. Fourth, you should give the people on your list creation powers. This is a form of crowdsourcing. Basically, you're telling people, tell me what kind of content you want me to share in my list. This can be third-party content. You then pick the most popular suggestions, and everybody gets to see their suggestion show up from time to time. You stand out from your competition because, let me tell you, in all likelihood, they're not giving their list members such powers. Keep these tips in mind when trying to build a sense of emotional buy-in. It can take quite a bit of time, but it's definitely worth it because you want your list to turn into a community. How to save money using solo ads. Let's get one thing clear. There is a lot of hype surrounding solo ads. There, I said it. I know I'm not supposed to say that because supposedly, solo ads are the best thing since sliced bread. Well, in many situations, it is. You get to convert more clicks into sales with solo ads. They tend to be more targeted, and this can lead to more useful and productive list members. The problem is there are two key factors that hold back solo ads. These are the reasons why you should not buy solo ads the moment you start list marketing. First of all, solo ads are usually expensive. The more finely tuned and targeted the list you're going to be advertising on, the more expensive it can be. Also, the more responsive the list, the more expensive it would be for you to place an ad on that list. The reason for this should be obvious. If the list owner is making a lot of money pushing all sorts of affiliated products or even his or her own products, you can bet you're going to have to pay a premium to share that same space. Next, solo ads can be very ineffective. Let's get one thing clear. Again, I'm talking about a few and by no means all. Some solo ad sellers are scammers. Seriously. They just put up their list, fill it with junk members, and make money by selling solo ad spots. They are really not making money in any other way from their list. Even if the solo ad seller is not a scammer, your solo ad placement would still be worthless because many promoters market their list in a way that tends to attract list squatters. These are people who sign up to many different lists using emails that they don't really check just because they're looking for freebies. These squatters are not your customers. They have no intention of ever buying anything. Finally, solo ads can be very ineffective because many promoters blast so many ads to their lists that people have been desensitized. They don't even open their emails. They just throw good money out the window by advertising on such lists. Are you depressed yet? Well, don't give up hope. There's a cheaper, more effective solution than using solo ad directories and listing services. Do your own outreach with niche-focused blogs that have their own mailing lists. The great thing about this method of placing solo ads is you will probably get a hold of virgin solo ad sellers. 
they haven't sold too many solo ads and are more likely to give you a break in terms of pricing, feel free to make many custom deals with such bloggers. Many would be eager to make a deal with you because they are not making that much money off their blog. Little do they know that they are sitting on a gold mine. Here are some tips how to maximize your results. First, you need to contact as many of these blogs as possible. Next, run small test campaigns. The cheaper, the better. Once you notice that certain outlets convert on a much higher rate, pay more for those lists. Expand your campaigns and see if you can replicate your conversion rate. Most importantly, try to negotiate so you can pay for placement, not per click. Now you may be asking yourself, doesn't this take a lot of time? Well, it does. The good news is you can hire a virtual assistant to do the research for you. They can compile the lists and do initial outreach, and you can close the deals. This saves you a tremendous amount of time and also helps you do adequate preparation to negotiate the very best deals. The 5 Solo Ad Secrets That Can Kill Your List Marketing Business There are 5 secrets in the solo ad industry that insiders do not want you to know. You are the outsider looking in, and unfortunately, if you just jump in with both feet, you would probably get killed. This is the reason why a lot of people are convinced that solo ads, as a whole, is essentially just a giant scam. I won't go that far. Solo ads can and do work. However, you need to be aware of the following five secrets that I'll share with you. Otherwise, you are probably going to get burned. Secret number one. The most popular solo ad niches are very saturated. When people talk about solo ads and how awesome the results are, they're usually referring to a certain range of niches. These are actually very saturated. It seems that there are a lot of people selling ads in those niches. It's too easy to assume that just because somebody had a great experience from some random list, you can replicate that person's success. That person might just be blowing hot air, or that person may know that he or she is doing and advertising on a specialized list within that niche. You really don't know what's going on. Still, be mindful of the fact that a lot of this hype tends to revolve around very saturated niches. This should be a red flag. Secret number two. Many solo ad sellers target professional list members. There are many professional list solo ad sellers. These are people who make a living selling solo ad spots. They don't make their living actually selling to their list. It should be obvious that their interest is completely opposite of yours. It's a 180 degree difference. Their job is to get you to advertise to their list, so they try to excite you and get you pumped up with their huge list numbers. Well, it turns out that in many cases, these numbers are made up of people who have no interest in buying anything. These are list squatters who simply got on the list because they're looking for some sort of free books, free software, or some sort of premium. Secret number three. The solo ad industry can be incestuous and cover up for each other. There are many instances where scammers have given the solo ad industry a black eye. However, instead of cleaning up its act, many otherwise legit solo ad sellers try to play the victim or pretend that the scammers are very few and far between. This ends up protecting shady players, and a lot of newbie solo ad advertisers like yourself end up getting burned. Know this going in, that it's going to be very hard to get solo ad sellers to give you the real deal as far as who is legit and who is shady. Secret number four. No solo ad sellers throttle their traffic. Another problem with solo ads that you need to be aware of before you spend a penny on is this type of traffic is in fact solo ad sellers selling clicks. They don't sell ad placements. They will tell you that they will run your ad, but if your ad gets enough clicks, they would redirect those clicks to go somewhere else. In other words, you are paying too much money because you are paying for clicks. For the longest time, the average per click rate was 25 cents. You can get a better deal on Facebook, to be honest. Don't get confused. A lot of Virgin Solo ad advertisers think they are paying for placement. They are not. They are paying per click. Secret number five. There is no reinforced rule on oversaturation. 
A lot of solo ad sellers would like to give you the impression that they please each other and that there is some sort of community standards. Don't believe it. It's just an appearance. In reality, solo ad sellers are pretty much on their own when it comes to how often they send updates to their mailing list. If you are unlucky enough to advertise with solo ad sellers that blast ads to their list every single day, you can bet that such list is not very responsive. You can get clicks, but believe me, those clicks are not going to turn into dollars. Those people have been desensitized by so many ads. Keep the five solo ad secrets above in mind. They will spell the difference between you making money off solo ads or losing your shirt. The four key reasons why you need to sell your own products. A lot of list marketers hesitate to sell their own products. They think they can only use affiliate products. They think that it's just too much effort to sell your own products and are afraid of wasting time. In fact, they can come up with 1,001 reasons why they'd rather not sell their own products. Let me tell you, there are four main reasons why you should invest the time and money to sell your own products. In fact, this can mean the difference between making a profit and continuing to struggle. Reason number one. You can convert more with a sales page that you control. When you sell your own product, you are in full control of the sales page, selling that product. You can focus on certain emotions. You can position the product in a certain way. You can make all sorts of decisions that can increase the conversion rate of your sales page. You don't have such power over the typical affiliate product sales page. You can make a preliminary sales page that your traffic has to go through before ending up at the affiliate product's landing page. However, at the end of the day, you are still at the mercy of the affiliate product's vendor sales skills. What if they don't know how to sell? What if they send conflicting signals? You work hard to send that traffic only to lose it all because that page you dump the traffic on flat out sucks. Reason number two. You are able to engineer a product that appeals directly to your niche audience. Nobody knows your niche audience better than you. Well, at least if you know how to market properly, you should have a clear idea of what your audience needs. The problem with affiliate marketing is that you're trying to reconcile the actual needs of your audience with the benefits of the product you are pushing. This is not always a tight fit. In fact, in many cases, there are gray areas. You really have to massage your communication flow with your niche audience to fully see the value product that you are promoting brings to the table. You won't have this problem when you are selling your own product because you can build a product from the ground up based on your niche's audience's feedback. There is no guesswork involved. There is no need for you to fit a square peg into a round hole. You can make sure that everything fits smoothly and easily from day one. Reason number three. You get more control over refunds. I don't know about you, but most affiliate marketers hate refunds. Imagine starting out in affiliate marketing, making a few thousand dollars in the first week, feeling really pumped up. Then the refunds start coming in, and it seems they won't stop. Then you look at your bank account and almost all the profits vaporized. That's how bad refunds can be. Unfortunately, you really can't control them if you are selling an affiliate product. You are at the mercy of the customer support skills and policies of the company behind the affiliate product you are pushing. If you are tired of refunds, why don't you take full control of selling your own products? You can service your customers more intimately and send the right signals in such a way that instead of having to shell out a refund, you might even get additional sales. Reason number four, you get to bolster your brand. By selling your own products, you can end up with a solid gold niche brand. How? Well, your product can speak to how professional and caring your brand is to a specific audience. Your product may be so awesome that you developed a solid gold reputation in your target market. You don't get this with an affiliate product because there are many other marketers selling the same product. Keep the four reasons above in mind if you are still on the fence regarding selling your own product. If you have been in the list marketing game for any period of time, it's probably dawned on you that you need to at least sell a dollar product. This is a great way to segment your mass list into two buckets, tire kickers and buyers. Still, if you really want to take your profit margins to a whole new level, you need to sell your own products.
How to hire the right virtual assistant to market your email list. Make no mistake about it, if you want to take your list income to the next level, you have to scale up your operations. You have to put in a lot more effort and cover a lot more niches as well as do a lot of legwork. Now, if you have a day job or you'd rather spend the majority of your time taking care of your family, this can be a serious issue. The good news is that the Internet has enabled marketers based in the United States, Western Europe, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand to tap the global freelance marketplace for top-notch talent. If you're looking to save money by hiring the right freelancer, you have to make sure you have the right hiring system. Otherwise, this idea is going to blow up in your face seriously. Here are the steps you need to follow to ensure that you hire the right remote staff. Be clear on what you and your VA will do. Here's a spoiler. Virtual assistants are not mind readers. They don't know what you're thinking. They don't even have an idea of what your grand vision is for your business. All they know is you're hiring them to do certain tasks. You have to be clear as possible regarding the division of labor between you and your VA before you hire that person. Otherwise, any confusion on your part will end up poisoning the relationship. Also, it would sabotage whatever results you get from your freelancer. Assign test assignments to applicants. Regardless of how much you pay, there will be more applicants for the job you're advertising than the available spot. When I put out a freelancer job, I usually get a ratio of 20 to 1. It all depends on the freelancer platform you're using. Still, you must have a way of filtering these individuals. Not all of them know how to follow English instructions. Not all of them have the right analytical skills to produce a quality work product. Accordingly, you need to set up tryout assignments that test the diligence and their skill set. These are two totally different things. You need to set up the tryout in a way that tests a person's ability to start a project and carry it all the way through. This is a big deal. You don't want to hire someone who says they will do the job and it turns out they are doing something else. By the time the deadline comes around, you'll end up where you began. The work is still not done and this person has just ended up wasting your time. The fact that you don't have to pay that person is cold comfort because you still have tasks undone. Diligence is critical. However, skills are just as important. Make sure that they can do the job. Whether you're doing Facebook marketing, ad management, social media marketing, or content marketing, the VA you select must do a good job. Start your VA slow and low. Even if you have found somebody who can do the job right, don't overwhelm that person with a huge amount of work. Start them with a low amount of work. Pay attention to the quality of their work. Guide them each step of the way. Then slowly increase the volume. The key here is to make sure that they are able to produce a high-quality product at a high enough volume for you to make a profit. Give them enough time to learn your traffic platforms. Since you're hiring your VA to market your list on many different traffic platforms, it's a good idea to spoon-feed them with each new traffic platform. For example, you start off with YouTube. Make sure that you start them slow and low. As they master YouTube, slowly transition them to other traffic platforms and start slow and low there as well. At the end of the process, this person should be able to crank out a tremendous amount of traffic, handling many different traffic platforms. However, this doesn't happen overnight. You have to invest the time and attention to detail to properly guide your virtual assistant. Make sure they have enough content. Whatever marketing you're doing, content will always be involved. Regardless of whether you write it yourself or have your VA do it or it's third-party content, you still have to use this material. This is why it's really important to make sure you have enough content to do marketing correctly from the get-go. This is how a lot of list marketers fail. They get the right virtual assistant, but they don't have enough content and end up paying for a virtual assistant's time because the assistant really has nothing to work with. Scale up to match quality, not quantity. Your overarching goal is to ensure your VA produces quality work. Quality should be top priority. Quantity will come later. Make sure your assistant knows this. Also, make sure they are clear as to your expectations. Spell it out for them. Tell them in no uncertain terms that you want quality now, but the quantity of work will rise. In this way, they are not taken by surprise when you increase your order. Offer incentives for a job well done. 
If you have a virtual assistant who has been with you for a long time and this person produces high quality work, give that person a bonus from time to time. This bonus may take many different forms. The bonus can take form of more work so they can earn more money. It also involves a traditional bonus where you just give them a lump sum of cash. Whatever the case may be, make sure that it's tied closely to a job well done. There has to be a reason why you're giving them a bonus and they must know this reason. Keep the tips above in mind to make sure you hire the right VA. Hiring a virtual assistant is definitely a step in the right direction, but you need to do it right. Otherwise, you're just going to end up wasting a tremendous amount of time and money. The Top 5 Ways to Fail with Video Sales Pages You probably have seen all sorts of video sales pages on the internet, marketing all sorts of products. They seem to be all over the place. Let me tell you, most of them are doing a lousy job. In fact, I'm certain that the vast majority of them are not moving all the products they are supposed to promote. They fail because of the following five reasons. Repeat the same content as the sales text. Have you ever found yourself on a sales page and watched the video on that page? You then glance down to the text on that page, and it's obvious that the video spokesperson is simply just reciting the stuff you're reading. The content is the same. This is a serious problem, because the video sales page is supposed to connect with the visitor on a personal level. They are supposed to get across information that you cannot get from the text. Don't commit this mistake to your own video sales page. Your video spokesperson must focus primarily on sending the right reassuring emotional signals to the prospect. Their job is to build trust, not necessarily recycle the same stuff that you've already covered with your sales page text. Employ a video salesperson with limited presence. There are many video spokespersons available on freelance platforms like Fiverr. A lot of them look alike. A lot of them definitely talk alike. However, the big difference often boils down to pricing. Don't make the mistake of using the cheapest video spokesperson, because that person may be cheap for a reason. You have to understand that spokespersons are supposed to connect with the prospect on a person-to-person -person level. They are supposed to create an intimate space of trust. They send off certain unspoken signals that get the reader to take them seriously. Unfortunately, if you just hire the first random video spokesperson you come across because they charge very little money, chances are that person would drop the ball. That person probably does not have the right presence in the context of your sales page to do a good job. Your video sales page is not going to convert your visitors. Use video with bad audio quality. Your video sales page might have the right script and feature the very best video spokesperson. Unfortunately, it would still fall flat. Why? Maybe the person is not speaking clearly enough due to bad recording equipment you used for the video. You have to understand that when a prospect is listening and watching a video spokesperson, they are trying to pick up on certain signals. They can't quite put their finger on it, but they are trying to get a total experience out of the video. This is how video spokespersons build credibility and authority. Unfortunately, this is almost never going to happen if your video has bad audio quality. Use video with bad angles. When you take the video of a person at a wrong angle, you may be emphasizing a part of their presence that might not do a good job selling the product they are marketing. This bad angle may either distract the visitor or downplay the emotional importance of the benefits your products bring to the table. Regardless of the reason, bad video angles reduce overall convincing power of a video spokesperson. It takes skill to shoot a highly effective and intimate video spokesperson footage. Make sure the video spokesperson you hire understands this and has the right experience and adequate video equipment. Fail to zoom in on the presenter's face at key points. A great speech is able to move people's hearts, not because it's packed with top-notch quality, but oftentimes because of emphasis. Practically speaking, people do not have the patience to listen to a full speech. Instead, they just want to hear certain parts that resonate the most with them, because that's what they're most interested in. If your video doesn't zoom in on the presenter's face at key points during his or her presentation, your video will fall flat.
it will look, sound, and feel like the vast majority of other videos out there. In other words, it's not going to make much of an impact. Keep the top five warnings above in mind when getting your own video sales page done. You have to make sure when you get your video done that it does the job you want it to do. Don't look at it as just one checklist item. Don't look at it as just another video to make your sales page look more presentable. If that is your thinking, chances are your video sales page is going to fall flat on its face. The 5 Signs Your List Is Ready To Be Sold For A Profit In any business, you have to have an exit strategy. It's easy to think that a successful business is going to be some sort of long-term cash cow. You build up a business and you just milk it for cash indefinitely. That is a very problematic model for online businesses. You have to sell at the peak of your business because it's anybody's guess when your niche business will go belly up because fluctuating demands or changing market conditions. The big challenge, however, is timing your exit properly. You need to know when it's the best time to sell your business so you can get the highest value for it. Here are five signs that your list is ready to be sold for maximum profits. Sign number one. Your sign-up rate is predictably high. If you have to set up your mailing list in a way that converts traffic to list members at a predictably high rate, this means that you have maximized its recruitment ability. Pat yourself on the back, seriously. Most list marketers never get around to doing this. Instead, they spend a lot of money on traffic and have very little to show for it because they did not optimize their list sign-up rate. If your list converts traffic at a predictably high rate, you can save quite a bit of money. You can reduce your overall marketing budget and still end up with a lot of list members. This ends up boosting your profit margin, and you can bet any would-be buyer would be excited by this. Sign number two. Your upsell conversion rate is predictable and steady. Not only should your recruitment rate be predictable and high, your upsell conversion should be predictable as well. This means that you don't lose sleep over your list. You are not running around frantically trying to optimize your list because one day you're feasting and the next day you're starving. Instead, you have put enough time, effort, and energy into optimizing your list so that it produces income at a steady clip. Sign number three. You've set up, own, of your list in your niche market. You know you're doing well when you have set up different copies of your list to capture many different interest areas in your niche market. This enables you to own your niche market. This gives you a tremendous competitive advantage, and any potential buyer would definitely be excited by this fact. They are more likely to pay top dollar because they are rest assured they are not just a secondary player. When you have scaled up to this extent, they have gained some assurance that they are actually buying into a dominant marketing position. Sign number four, you are selling your own products at a higher profit margin. If you have taken the time to actually sell your own products, this makes your list very distinctive. I can't even begin to tell you how common affiliate product-driven lists are. In fact, they're a dime a dozen. However, if you were to sell mostly the products on your list, your property will stand out from the crowd. Your potential buyer would be able to see this. They can see that you're just not selling traffic, but you're also selling a tried and proven product mix that converts at a steady rate. Most serious business people can see the upside potential of this venture. Sign number five. Your list shows signs of being a genuinely fan community. When your list reaches the point where list members are actively promoting your content, you have something special on your hands. You're no longer dealing with otherwise generic lists engineered to squeeze the value of list members. Instead, you have an asset that speaks to genuine needs of people who are passionate about a niche. This is worth quite a bit of money because your list brand commands respect. It has become some sort of authority in your niche. You can bet knowledgeable buyers would pay premium for such a brand authority. Keep the five signs above in mind when assessing your list. You should sell at the top, and if your list exhibits more than a couple of these signs, you should seriously consider selling your list. This increases the likelihood that you would exit at or near the top.